Final Cut Pro 10.8 is here and we have some long awaited features, some new AI features, and a few small things that are going to be super useful in my daily workflow that I think you'll like. There's also one important thing you absolutely must do before updating to 10.8, which I'll talk about later. The first new feature is the enhanced light and color effect, which is powered by machine learning. Here's a shot from my Sony a7 III and to apply the enhanced light and color effect, you can simply click on this little drop down menu here by the magic wand and select enhanced light and color. And if we have a look at what that's done, it's kind of boosted the contrast, fixed the overexposed areas and warmed up the shot a little bit. We can also go ahead and customize it by clicking on the color inspector icon. And you can see here we have a master switch for this enhanced light and color. We can turn it on and off. We can also adjust the light and the color separately. So the exposure and contrast, you can adjust independently of the color adjustments. The nice thing about this is you can see exactly what Final Cut Pro has done to adjust the colors. So if you feel like you need to have a little bit more contrast, you can just tweak what Final Cut Pro has done for you. You might also think this is a little too warm. You can adjust that as far as highlights, midtones, and shadows go. Now, another thing I wanted to try was to duplicate my Poland vlog, which was this section here, and just select a whole range of clips. Let's select sort of all of this stuff, right? Which already has effects applied to it. As you can see here, I've got color wheels and all sorts of stuff going on. And I'm going to hit Command Shift X to remove attributes. And I'm going to remove just all of the effects. Then I'm going to go back over to this magic wand and hit enhance light and color for all of these clips. Essentially what I'm trying to figure out here is if you could do a rough grade on a whole selection of clips in one go, even if it means going in and tweaking a bit later, but maybe you need to send a rough draft to a client and you want to be able to grade the whole thing really quickly, this could be an option. Let's have a look. So if I zoom in over here, you can see we've got a decent grade on most shots. Some of them look a little flat but I do shoot in a flat profile on my Sony a7 III. So it does an okay job at doing a rough grade. You know, if we turn this off and on again, you can see we've got some decent adjustments here. So I don't think this effect is something you'll apply to all the clips in your timeline and just hit export. You probably will have to go in and tweak, but it's a great place to start your grading process. Another new feature is the ability to drag and drop effects from your inspector window directly onto a clip. So if you have a look at this clip with Dylan Bates and myself, you'll see that I have a bunch of effects on this clip. And moving forward in the timeline, I have no effects on this clip. So what you can do with this clip selected is you can just drag an effect directly onto a clip in the timeline and it'll copy and paste that effect. What I could also do with this clip selected and my playhead over the next clip is I can drag any one of these effects directly onto the viewer window. Another cool thing with this clip selected, I can go ahead and shift click or command click to select multiple plugins or effects and I can drag that onto a clip. So you can either copy one or multiple effects at a time. And that brings me to the next feature, which is a long awaited one for me, but it's really, really helpful. Especially when you have multiple layers of effects on your clip, you can now right click on an effect and rename it. So for example, I can rename this effect to contrast. And this effect was my saturation and cooling the shot. So I can double click as well and I can call this sat and cool. And the cool thing is it works for third party effects too. For example, Color Finale Pro, I really like their sharpening. So I often use this just to sharpen a clip. And one thing I've noticed that's weird is you can't rename the balance color effect. I'm not sure why that is. Maybe it's just me. Let me know if you're able to rename the balance color effect. The next feature is the one I'm probably most excited about in this Final Cut Pro 10.8 update, and that is the ability to do smooth slow-mo, which is essentially a better version of optical flow, but it uses AI. So if we have a look at this clip, <laughs> this was shot at 23.98 frames per second, and it's on a 23.98 frames per second timeline. So if I slow this down using my Retime Editor over here, you'll see that we now have slow and smooth slow-mo. We'll get to that in a second. I just want to show you the comparison quick. If I slow it down to 25% with no optical flow, this is what it looks like. It's all jerky and choppy, and that makes sense because we're essentially dropping frames. What we used to be able to do was head over to the Retiming bar, select Video Quality, and choose Optical Flow. Final Cut Pro then generates new frames, and if you watch that back, you can see the slow motion's better than that jerkiness, but there's lots of distortion and weird stuff happening around Dylan's body here. So it's not an ideal solution for this specific shot. But with the new slow-mo feature, you can choose smooth slow-mo, let's select 25% again, 
And if I play that back, you'll see how it's much better around his body. The slow motion looks way better. There's still a little bit of distortion happening around the feet and the details in the grass, but this clip is way more usable than the optical flow version. Now you don't only have to select between 50, 25 and 10%. You can adjust this clip to any sort of custom value you like and you can go to video quality and enable this best option, the machine learning option. And that is essentially going to give you that same smooth slow motion. The next thing we have in this Final Cut Pro 10.8 update is some advanced search and filtering. Starting over here in the index window, if you click on this drop down arrow, you'll see we have a few different things we can filter by. If you have missing media in your timeline, you can select that and any missing clips will pop up. What's also cool is you can select anything that's been retimed. So if you're specifically looking for anything that's had some sort of speed ramp applied to it or been slowed down or sped up, you can find all of those or select them all here and you can see all of those clips in your timeline. So that's really nice. Another thing we can do is search for duplicate ranges. Now you'll see in this case, I have a bunch of sound effects that are duplicated, but I can also filter this further by clicking video. And now I have all the duplicate clips that I can quickly navigate to in my timeline. Now, if I zoom into my timeline here, you'll see that all my footage that I shot on this trip is labeled Poland Brad. And I have footage that the other guy shot as well. You can see I've got different file names here on my timeline. But let's say I want to search for just my footage. I can click on the little search icon here and then I can click on this little button to open up this window and I can filter all the text that starts with Poland Brad. Now I'll just expand these options quickly and you'll see I've got all the footage that I shot on this trip. In the last update of Final Cut Pro, we got the scrolling timeline. And if you remember correctly, we had to go into Final Cut Pro settings to enable that. But now we have this little button to enable scrolling playback right here. And there's a shortcut for it, Control Option Command S. So here's normal playback and Control Option Command S will enable the scrolling timeline. And I can also disable it using the same shortcut. Now there is one feature that has been removed in this update and that is the ability to share your files to a DVD or Blu-ray. So if that's something that you still do, you might want to run both versions of Final Cut just so that you're able to export to DVD or find another solution. Now, I know that this update is still missing some features that a lot of people have been eagerly awaiting like auto captions, text-based editing and some other things. But seeing some of these new AI-based features in this update does leave me feeling optimistic about the future of Final Cut Pro. If there are any features that you would love to see in Final Cut Pro, I'd recommend taking the time to head over to Apple's feature request form to request the features there. The more people that actually go ahead and give Apple that feedback, the more likely we are to have those features implemented in the future. So I'm excited about this update and I'd love to hear what you think of these new features in the comments down below. Before you update to Final Cut Pro 10.8, you'll want to make sure you create a backup copy of your current version in case you need to roll back. You can do that by right clicking on Final Cut Pro and selecting Compress. That will create a zip file that you can then unzip if you need the previous version of Final Cut Pro again. I go into more detail about the proper way to go about updating and backing up in this video, so be sure to watch that next if you plan on updating.